Hello, I'm Shannon Bay, the Program Manager of Adult and Community Engagement at the George O'Keefe Museum, and I am here today to talk to you about who George O'Keefe was. So George O'Keefe was an American artist who was born in 1887 and lived until 1986. She passed away when she was 98 and a half, so she had a very long life, and she created art throughout her entire life. And what you see here is a drawing that she created in 1904 at the age of 16, and it's of her sister Claudia. And then the painting is called From the River Light Blue, and she created it when she was 76 years old. Here we have a photograph of George O'Keefe at the age of 15. Um, so this is a photo that would have appeared in her high school yearbook. And this is an early watercolor that she did. It was done in 1916, and it's called Blue Lines. So in 1916, many people were still creating artworks that were very recognizable, realistic. And this is an abstract art. So what is abstraction? Abstraction means that it is um, artwork that is not recognizable. It's not a recognizable object that you um, know of. So this is something where George O'Keefe took an object, and we actually do know what it is, and we know from letters that she wrote that she's looking at a skyscraper in New York City here, and she has distilled it down to these very simple lines and only the elements that she wanted to share in her artwork. So George O'Keefe would sometimes work in series where she would look at the same subject matter and then she would paint it or draw it in different ways. So here we have a series titled Evening Star, and she painted this multiple times um, over the course of a time period, I don't know how long, um, in 1917 when she was a college professor in Texas. Um, so you can see here she revisited the same subject matter and painted it different ways. And this is something you can do. You can look at the same thing. Um, you might look at it from different angles, or you might look at it different times of day, and it's going to change what it looks like to you. Here we have a painting she created in New York City. So George O'Keefe, after being a teacher in Texas, she moved to New York City to pursue her career as an artist, which is where many artists want to live in the early 1900s. So here we see a um, skyscraper in New York City, and it's called the Radiator Building. George O'Keefe is very well known for painting flowers, and here are two examples of flowers that she painted. Flowers sold really well. People wanted them, um, and they were very pretty, of course, for people to hang in their homes. But again, she's drawing them and painting them a little bit differently than some people um, because she's zooming in really closely and looking at all the small details that make up the flower. So the first time George O'Keefe comes to New Mexico is in 1917. She actually is traveling from Texas to Colorado to um, on a trip with her sister, and the train breaks down in Santa Fe. And she's in Santa Fe for three days in 1917. And she's been quoted as saying that she was always trying to get back to New Mexico. So the first time she comes back after that is 1929. And she spends three months in um, Taos, New Mexico, in 1929 and she creates many pieces of artwork and this is a sampling of the various kinds of artwork she created and you can see she looks at very um, a variety of subject matters so we have landscape with the river um, we have buildings we have different symbols of new mexico such as a penitente cross or a cachina doll so she looks at a lot of different things um, while she's staying in new mexico and finds a great deal of inspiration here and this is an example of her artistic process. So first she starts out with a line drawing. You can see just the outlines of the church, Rancho's, um, Rancho's church in Rancho de Taos. And then she goes to a charcoal drawing where she does shading. And she's looking at where the light areas of the um, artwork and where are the darker areas of the artwork. And this is actually called noton, which is a Japanese term for light and dark. And then she creates her final product in oil painting. Now, not all of her drawings become paintings, but all of her paintings have drawings that go with them. And we're very lucky at the George O'Keefe Museum that we're the repository of many of those drawings that were first created prior to her paintings being created. Here's a photograph of George O'Keefe in 1929. So this is after she returns from New Mexico. Um, she, and when she was in New Mexico that summer, she actually learned to drive a car for the first time. And she was 
41 years old at the time when she learned to drive a car. And she took that car back to New York where she was living permanently. And this is an image of her with her car that was actually taken by her husband, Alfred Sieglitz, who was a well-known photographer and gallery owner. And one of the things she comes across in New Mexico are bones, and she's really inspired by them. And she actually finds that they have more life in them, or she thinks they have more life in them than the animals do that are actually roaming the landscape. So she collects these bones while she's in New Mexico, and she sends them back to New York City, which is where she actually first does um, a bone painting. So these are two examples of bone paintings that she created. And here's a photograph of George O'Keefe a little bit later in her life. She is 74 years old in this picture, um, and she's at her home in Abiquiu, New Mexico here with two, her two chows. She loved having animals. Um, she had cats and dogs throughout her life. And something that really drew her to New Mexico was the landscape. So she actually ended up purchasing two homes in New Mexico, one in Abiquiu and one at Ghost Ranch. Abiquiu is about an hour drive north of Santa Fe, and Ghost Ranch is about an hour and a half drive north of um, Santa Fe. And you can see both of these were actually created at Ghost Ranch. They're both landscapes of Ghost Ranch, but they're a little bit different than your typical landscape. So the one on the bottom Normally a landscape would have a lot more sky in it, but she really takes the rock formation that she's looking at, the cliffs that she's looking at, and she fills the whole painting with them and only gives us a little hint of sky in that, which is very unique. And Georgia O'Keeffe actually converted her car into an outdoor studio. So we see a photograph of her here, which was created by Ansel Adams, who's a well-known photographer, of her in her car painting. So she took the passenger seat and unbolted it and then repositioned it so it was facing backwards. And then she used the back seat to pop up her canvas and paint so she could paint outdoors in New Mexico and not be bothered by the sun. And on the right, we see the um, painting that she created while she was in her car called Gerald's Tree, which this is a landscape at um, Ghost Ranch. And here are some photographs of George O'Keefe and her collections. So she collected rocks and she also collected bones. So we can see some of the bones here on her porch at Ghost Ranch, at her Ghost Ranch house. And then there's a photograph of her collecting bones. And she, um, so she would paint flowers and she would paint landscapes, she would paint bones. And then in 1935, this is the first painting where she um, put all of those elements together into one image, which is not a realistic image. We have what might be a more realistic looking landscape, but then we have this flower and bone floating above them, which does make it an abstract piece of art, because of course it's not realistic. So George O'Keefe moved to New Mexico permanently in 1949 um, after the after her husband passed away because he lived in New York City. And um, so after he passed away, she moved to New Mexico and she bought her first home here. And well, she bought her first home at Ghost Ranch and her second home in Abiquiu. And what you see here is a patio door at her Abiquiu house that she just loved. And she painted it over and over again. And these are several examples of how she painted them. So you can see she painted the same door from various angles um, in different seasons, different times of day. We can tell that by the different shadows that we see crossing across the door. So you can look at the same subject matter and find it interesting in different ways. And, you know, don't just think you see something once. You can always keep looking at it and find something new. And here's a photograph of George O'Keefe standing in that door. She is about five feet, seven inches tall, um, if you're curious. So um, you can see how big that door is in the patio that she painted. And George O'Keefe loved to explore and travel. So these are pictures from a raft trip that she took in 1961. Um, and she would have been 73 years old when she went on this rafting trip. And you can see she's even helping to row the boat here. And um, on the left-hand side, she is um, actually sketching in that little book there. So she was creating art and finding inspiration on this raft trip. And something she did on um, these rafting trips, she actually went on several. Um, she took a Polaroid camera, and the image on the top left is a Polaroid that George O'Keefe took on that trip. And then once she was home, she created a charcoal drawing 
from that Polaroid and then she created her painting. So she would record memories in different ways. Sometimes she would take a photograph and then she might later use that in the studio to create a painting or she would create a drawing and later create a painting from that. So she used both techniques. And as I mentioned, she loved to travel um, and something she started to do in the 1950s would travel internationally. So this is actually an image. It's called Sky Above Cloud 2. And she created this from an airplane. So she's above the clouds looking down on them. And Georgia O'Keeffe continued to create artwork throughout her entire life. Um, eventually, she did actually lose um, her eyesight. Her, she had macular degeneration, which means she had no central vision. She could only see peripherally, so she could only see out right and left. So if you put your hands in front of your eyes and what you see right and left, that's what her field of vision looked like. Um, but it didn't stop her from creating art. She had a drive to continue to create art. And these are watercolors that she created late in her life. So that's the end of the presentation. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed learning about Georgia O'Keeffe.